21 through 27. You have heard that it was said to those of ancient times, you shall not murder, and whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you, if you are angry with your brother or sister, you will be liable to judgment. And if you insult your brother or sister, you will be liable to the council. And if you say, you fool, you will be liable to the hell of fire. So when you are offering your gift at the altar, if you remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First, be reconciled to your brother or sister, and then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while you are on the way to court with him, or your accuser may hand you over to the judge and the judge to the guard, and you will be thrown into prison. Truly, I tell you, you will never get out until you have paid the last penny. My Lord, my Lord.
God, we come declaring that you are a way maker. God, we come declaring that that's just who, who you are. God, we come declaring our love for you. God, we thank you for everything you have been. Now, God, bless this, your preacher. Bless me to hear the words that you have put inside of me and lift them in your way. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, our scripture is coming from what I call Jesus' State of the Kingdom Address. And I, I don't have a whole lot of words written. And I don't plan to hold you long. Matthew, the fifth chapter, starting at verse 21 through verses 26. Um, and I probably, well, let, let's read. You have heard that it was said to those of ancient time, you shall not murder. And whoever murders shall be liable of judgment. Now murder has to do with shedding of innocent blood. But I say to you, if you are angry with a brother or sister, you will be liable of judgment. If you insult a brother or sister, you will be liable to the council. And if you say you fool, you will be liable to the hell of fire. So when you are offering your gifts at the altar, if you remember that your brother or sister has something against you, hear this now. He didn't say if you have something against them. He said, if they have something against you, leave your offer. At the altar. And go first to be reconciled to your brother or sister. And then come and offer your gifts to God. Come to terms quickly with your adversary while you are on your way to court with him or her, or your accuser may hand you over to the judge the judge to the guard, and you will be thrown in prison. Truly, I tell you, you will never get out until you have paid the last penny. Um, my brothers and sisters, God hit me in the head this morning. God told me to tell y'all that we got to let it go. Let it go. 
Um, I have to own that I know how to hold a grudge. I got nothing to do with y'all, but I know how to hold grudges. All of my life, I could plot and exact revenge with perfect pain. And when I was Twenty-three, twenty-two. God had to deal with me on my notion of vengeance in mind, said the Lord, and I'm God's agent to give. And 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 over the years, as I'm about to turn forty, two Wednesdays from now, God has been dealing with me. On the fact that, yeah, you've improved, but you still hadn't let go some stuff. All right, and God said, it's a journey, but some things you need to hurry up and let go. Yes, sir. <laughs> and, and, and I was reading on, on, on this text, and God helped me to see that in this honor and shame society that one's dignity was tied to everything that was done to you and and in these societies people got to the place where good. people took every little thing of disrespect to the heart and 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 it and it often ended up in the annihilation of families and family bonds. Um, um, you would have relatives who who wanted their, their family members' inheritance from God, who who wanted their land and and would bribe judges so that that their their family member would go to jail and 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 lose their inheritance, and and it got so bad to where. Well, well, there was a group called the Zealots, and every so often the Zealots would rise up and they would take over Jerusalem. And the first thing they did when they got to Jerusalem was burn all of the records that the, that the priests had in, store, in storage that dealt with the debt of the people. In other words, they were saying that, that the system we live in have done injustice to us and they put God's stamp on the justice and we know God ain't got nothing to do with their corruption but, but we gonna get back our honor by inflicting pain on them and they will burn all of the records so that, that they could be set free and their lands be restored to them. And Jesus was saying that, that, that we've got to learn to stop building systems of injustice and putting stumbling blocks in our brothers and sisters' way. But also, we too poor, we too broke, we too broke gun to keep holding grudges on each other. Because the truth of the matter is we live in a hostile world where we need each other. And we've got to let go our petty differences so we can build the beloved community that Jesus wants us to live in. And, 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 so, and so, if the pastor did something that hurt your feelings, and I'm unaware that I hurt your feelings, it's too important for us to be at all that you need to put your offerings to God on hold and fix your relationship with God and your brother next to you, or God through your sister next to you, that, that I need to go repair the relationships with my family members who I got some ill feelings toward, that I need to be grown enough to go figure out a way to come to some sense of peace to where I ain't got to be 
Uh, we ain't got to be chummy. I ain't got to come to your house and eat dinner, but I can't have hatred towards you. I, I can't I can't keep you in a prison that I built and God didn't build. That I've got to let go some things so that God can bless all of us and so that we look out for the best for each other. And that and, and that and that that is I saw you as my enemy. But I'm frail and can't cook for myself. I can't clean my own house no more. But you, but you can make a good meal meal. You can, you can cook like heaven showed up. That I got to get over what's in me because God sent heaven back to feed me on this day. That, that, that you might know business, but your, but your relative, your family member, whom you did, you got some disdain for. But you see their stuff falling apart. That you love God and them enough that you say, darling, if you help, if you let me, I can help you get this together. Well, well, well. You can say, I know that we ain't been lockstep. I know we ain't been on the same page. I know that we got some differences, but I love you and love God enough that I'm going to help you get through this because it's what heaven would have me to do because my connection to Yeshua, yeah. that my connection to that North African Jew known as Jesus the Christ is too important for me to let another one of his children fail when I can help him. And so, so Jesus wants you to know that it's your job as a part of his community, as a part of his family, to come and help solve the shame of your brothers and sisters. My, 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 my. That if you got the ability to help, now notice I didn't say let them take advantage of you, but I said help. If you can, if you can can give them all of the tools they need to do a better direction, give it to them. Because God would have you to give them a fresh start. But, but God also wants you to understand that his word is true. Give and it shall be given back to you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Give love. Give forgiveness. Give mercy. Give your talents. Give your graces. And, and because you sold them into God's kingdom, God's kingdom going to send people by with what you need. So God is saying that we've got, to, we've got to give into the beloved community. And at first thought, we're making right in our relationship. And then as we make right in our earthly relationship, God makes it right with him in our spiritual relationship. And because God makes that relationship right, then God starts to pour bountiful blessings into your life. And so what I want y'all to understand is, is that Jesus is helping us to understand that your personal conflict can't help, should, you should not let your personal conflict hinder your kingdom position, your kingdom blessing. That you got to let go your personal conflict so God's kingdom blessings can flow around you and through you. And so God wants you to, to let it go. There was a story in the book of Judges. And um, there was a tribe called Benjamin. And there were a lot of men in the tribe of Benjamin that were left-handed. And they were some bad brothers. They were outnumbered, but they could kick some backside. But one in the tribe of Benjamin, this, in this one city, they came and um, they took advantage of a, of a, of a, a fellow Israelite who was traveling. They, they wanted to, to take advantage of him. And he was, he was uh, one gentleman came and got him out of the city coast and told him, no, don't stay out there because there's trouble out there. He said, come stay in my house. And the man had a wife who had played the harlot on him. She had ran away and he went to his, his fam, uh, to her family house and him being a Levite, her daddy got happy. 
But her daddy kept trying to keep him there, and he finally said, I got to go, and he left out. And he stopped in this Benjamite city. And when he got to this Benjamite city, another man took him in. And when, when them people was outside knocking, said, send that handsome brother out that, that we may get to, to know him, that, that we want to have, we want to, to practice sexual immorality with him. And, and they said, oh, no, no, no. But the, but the man sent his concubine out, uh, 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 his wife out. And, and they beat her and they brutalized her all night long. And she died at the threshold of the town. Now the men didn't fight for her honor. They added to her shame. The man contributed to the adultery that happened with his wife. He sent her out there. Then being self-righteous, he cut her into some pieces. And then he sent the pieces with a letter to the other tribes of Israel. The other tribes of Israel came together. Said we got to defend this Levite's honor. And the tribe of Benjamin said, we're going to defend our brother. And they went to war. It was 27,000, I think, in the tribe of Benjamin that went to battle. The first day they cut down over 50,000 of the other tribes of Israel. They were whipping their backside. The next day, the Benjamites kicked some more backside. But then the third day, the other tribes of Israel came and, and fell down before God and repented for their wickedness. And, and, and then God said, now go and fight them. Well. <laughs> and they were putting something unmerciful on Benjamin. And God said, let it go. Yeah. Benjamin was down to like, 10,000 men or something like that in all of their cities and not just the fighting men but just period. And God says you got to let this go. God said this feud, this grudge has gone on too far. Men that promise not to give any Benjamite their, wife, their, their daughters in marriage. Benjamin started to wither. And the men said, well, we made an oath before God, and we shouldn't have. We did it in anger. That we weren't going to have nothing to do with our brother Benjamin anymore. He said, we said we couldn't give him our daughters for wives, but, but, but hear what we'll do. Um, 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 there was a group that won that to me. They said, um, we'll trick them into thinking this is a festival. And when their daughters run out in the field, we'll let the men of Benjamin grab their daughters and take them for wives. And, and, and what it did was, it, it was their way to make Benjamin whole, to, to give Benjamin a future, to help Benjamin not wither and die. And, and if they hadn't done that, there would have never been a Paul or Saul of Tarsus. If, if, they, if they never practiced forgiveness, there was a whole lot of great Benjamites that would have never been born. Well, and, and, and Israel would have never been whole. Well, and so God, God wants us to know that we got some family issues and grudges that we've carried for way too long. And that because we've carried them, we've let Satan weaken the kingdom of God. That, that we've let Satan get get strongholds in our family. Yes, sir. We've let Satan have strongholds in our city and in our government because we hold grudges and don't let go. Come on, and, and, and God is saying to us simply that your love for me should be bigger than your issues. Yes, sir. And if you love me, I'll send my quadros ruach, my holy breath, wind, and spirit. 
to come settle down in your conversation. And you'll work through your issues with those who you got issues with because I'm worth it to you. I told y'all God hit me in the head. Well, well, well. And I got to tell y'all a story. Now I got some, some first cousins. And I love them, but I don't like them. God told me you got to, God showed me me. And my mama's siblings and my, my siblings and my first cousins sitting in a restaurant. And one of my cousins who creates a lot of dysfunction walked in the place. And that cousin who creates a lot of dysfunction started having an argument with one of her siblings. And, 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 and my sister, being the eldest grandchild, said something. And my sister didn't say it in the nicest way, but she said it direct and firm. And when my sister said something, the cousin went off the hammer. And then me, being wrong, looked at her and said, there you go again. We were enjoying ourselves, and you came in with this funk. And I said, said, now you go to church every, almost every day of the week. And all that church ain't changed your behavior. My, my, my. I said, this is why none of us want to be like you. We all know you got gifts and graces, but none of us want to be like you because you create dysfunction. And she got mad, and I could feel the family being ripped apart. And God woke me up. And God said, this is why you have to let go grudges. So because if you hold on to the grudges, if you hold on to few, yes, it rips the family apart. Yes, sir. But God said, but that ain't all Satan want to rip apart. He said, because after Satan rips the family apart, he rips the community apart. And he said, when Satan rips the community apart, the society falls apart. Well, well. God said, God said that when we devalue the community and devalue each other, all hell break loose. But God said if you can forgive and if you can get a group of people together and if you can talk through your differences like mature adults, heaven will rejoice that God will be glad to see all of the beautiful changes happening in you and around you and because God's will is being executed in your life you'll be able to say praise God from whom all blessings flow that you'll be able to experience God's blessings flow that you will experience not only God healing your family but you'll experience God elevating your family and you will experience God elevate your community. You won't see no more houses with boarded up windows. You won't see no more crackheads walking the street. If we lift God's standard and love each other and bring healing to each other and forgive each other and work to heal our hurts and work to, to heal wounds that we know we cause, that God will start to heal our land that God will send blessings and not curses, and that God will take care of all of your needs. Letting it go makes room in your hand to hold on to God. Letting it go makes room in your hand to hold on to God. Don't matter who fought it is. Let it go. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. The truth be told, you can't worship God holding on to other stuff. And when you let it go, He'll pull you out a blessing that you won't have room to receive.
So I realized today I got a text or a call or whatever with my first cousin. And let her know I love her. And I got to be the one to reach out to heal that relationship. Not because I'm more saved than her. No, not that. Because God told me to. And I want to please God. And I want to encourage you all to do the same. If you don't know what the feud is over, that's fine. But make peace for the call of God's kingdom. Grace is the ability 
to walk away from things that you love but are wrong in God's eyes. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ the sweet communion that's the fellowship and the presence of the Holy Spirit may it guide May it rest on you. May it rule in your life and in your relationship. May it keep you now and forever. In Jesus' name. Amen. I love you all. And hear me. I know I got flaws. I love you all, and if I've done anything wrong to you, I really mean this. I beg you to forgive me, but if I did something wrong to you, let's talk it out. For the sake of the kingdom of the Almighty God. And I'm not saying that I've done or not done, but I'm saying that in every relationship, we all contribute some way to natural tension. And we need to release them so God blesses us. God bless you and keep you. Have a blessed week. And I love you all. And there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. Thank you for worshiping with us today. We pray that you were blessed and touched by the worship experience. Though you may not have been able to worship with us in person, there's still two opportunities and ways that you may give. The first is by mailing your offering to the church at 722 South Distant Avenue, Tarpon Springs, Florida, 34689. The second way is by visiting our website at mountmariahamechurch.org and clicking Give. We pray to hear from you and that you were blessed.